Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we're going over this Makita 18 volt brushless compact hammer drill driver. We've had this for quite a bit, got a good amount of use with it. It's pretty a couple years old. Uh, we're gonna go over this tool, top to bottom, put it on the track and get some numbers. Stick with us. All right guys, so this right here is Makita's 18 volt LXT lithium ion compact brushless cordless half inch hammer drill driver. Wow, try to say that pretty fast, right? I mean, that's a mouthful. Anyways, model number on this one is XPH12. Uh, we got this a couple years ago. It came in a combo kit with, you know, a few bunch of other tools and stuff or whatnot. Um, we still use it around here or on the shop or at least in our shop, at least quite a bit. Um, it's not necessarily your go-to on job sites and stuff like that because mainly because there are lighter models, like for instance, their subcompact stuff. And then there also is heavier duty models uh, like the XPH 07s and, you know, um, 14s and stuff like that, I think. And also they have their XGT lineup which we kind of use a lot more now too so uh, this one's kind of been retired towards the shop There's also some things i don't necessarily like about it but before we get into a lot of the details let's go over and take a look at the marketing hype and then we'll bring you in closer and take a better look at it so this right here is makita's xph12 it uses a brushless motor that delivers up to 530 inch pounds of maximum torque the brushless motor is electronically controlled to optimize battery energy use for up to 50 percent longer longer run time per charge the brushless motor eliminates carbon brushes obviously enabling the motor to run cooler and more efficiently for longer life it has two speed variable uh trigger design has zero to 500 on low and zero to 2000 rpms on high on hammer drill driver on low it goes from zero to 7500 uh, bpm and zero to 30,000 bpm and covers a wide range of drilling driving and hammer drill applications it is compact at roughly around seven and an eighth inch long it says it weighs in right around four pounds with a battery, um, but with a five amp bar battery, it'll weigh in right around four pounds, 2.6 ounces, and that's with the battery fully charged. It has the Makita's XP, XPT technology, which is engineered to provide increased dust and water resistance to harsh job site conditions. It has a rubberized soft grip, has dual LED, has a metal gear housing for increased job site durability it's equipped with their star protection and obviously it comes with their standard makita three year warranty all right so this right here is obviously the left side of the drill if you're holding it right um it's got pretty much got makita um branding and stuff right there and it also says brushless here brushless here brushless on the back it's got brushless written on a couple times just in case you didn't know it was brushless and you want to hold it and you want and they want to make sure you know that it's brushless right so uh, nothing too much to say there it comes in their standard makita uh color this all this black stuff you see on here is pretty much a uh, rubberized over molding pretty standard makita grip nothing too out of the ordinary for use using makita tools that's going to be pretty straightforward um there is a belt clip here that installs with a one phillips uh, uh, screw um, you do have to install it when you get it there's you can also swap that out and put it on this side if you wanted to for whatever reason if you were either left-handed or you were right-handed you can put it on this side too if you want right so anyways that's what's really going on with this part right here this part right here as it is in almost all drills these days is a standard you know forward reverse switch haven't had any issues with that as you would expect this is a variable speed trigger and it does work pretty well let's demonstrate it for you real quick this is on uh, gear mode one. Right? Go to gear mode two. All right. So, I mean, it actually generally works pretty well. The other thing to note about that, right, is uh, you probably can't feel it or I can't explain it to you very well coming over a video, right? But this uh, gear, um, the variable speed trigger definitely gives you that sense uh, when the drill is rolling that it's actually getting a, uh, I mean, it, it provides you a good sense of refinement, like a semi good um, user feedback control, right? The one thing you can definitely tell with Makita stuff when you're using it is it's very well refined um, in terms of um, their not necessarily a thin finish, but in terms of power usage, it's got a good quiet balance and the user feel coming back to it is obviously very great, right? So anyways, that stuff is there. And that's what's really going on with that side. While we're on this side, let's talk about these two little uh, grooves here. So there's two grooves right here. And if you look at flipping around this side, there's also two grooves right there. And this is usually where um, you would, you know, 
put a side handle on and screw it on and hold it like that. Um, on this one, I don't know if it's because I got it as a kit or whatnot, it did not come with a side handle, although it looks like it should. Um, I tried using the XPH07 side handle that we have and also the uh, GPH01 side handle. And I can tell you right now, it does not fit on here, okay? So if you have one, that's great, but if you have other drill models, um, Makita drill models, at least like we do, um, though, those drill models, or at least those two, will not work on this model. So so make sure you keep that in mind, okay? Moving on to the back here, the back of this is generally pretty flat. It also says brush this on there. Um, nothing too much frills going on there. It is flat, it generally helps a little bit with like if you're pressing on it with hammer, uh, in like hammer drill mode or whatnot. Some drills that have this little bit like rounded off or weird edges and stuff, that kind of gets a little painful. On this one, not the case. So if you remove the battery here, it helps you see a little connection where you would connect like a little lan lanyard or some kind of clip if you wanted to. Uh, we don't really have that. I find that it always gets in the way in terms of the way we're working. Um, if you're working up on ladders or, or, um, or roofs or anything like that, I, I kind of see maybe where you can kind of get that useful. But for us, we don't really have too much need for that right now, okay? So moving on to this side, right? Right side of the drill. Pretty much standard, right? Nothing else going on here. Little stickers and emblems of, you know, their serial numbers and all that kind of fun stuff, but pretty much same as the other side, all right? So let's move on to the front here. Moving on to the front, um, as you can see, the LED model on this one is actually placed right here, right above the um, trigger. Um, is where the LED light is, okay? And it does look like there is two LED lights as noted earlier by the marketing hype, and it generally does work pretty well. The uh, this one does not have any buttons here. Some of them you'll see here um, on here, but it, this one does not. The battery indicator for this is actually on the battery itself, right? Um, some tools that have it on both the tools and the battery, whereas this one does not have it anywhere on the tool, but only has it on the battery, okay? Um, so moving back to the front here, let's talk about the top or the collar or front or whatnot. So on there, um, obviously this is on gear two. It has a two mode gear selector switch and it generally works pretty well. Doesn't have any issues not getting engaged or going forward or backwards by any means. At least I haven't experienced it or whatnot. On this one, it also has two uh, separate collets for selectors, right? So if this is on a screwdriver mode, which means it really engages um, this clutch or obeys the rules of the clutch, whatever you wanna call it, right? You can also select this directly to uh, drill mode, right? Or you can select it to hammer drill mode. That's right, this one is a hammer drill driver, okay? And um, the clutch setting is obviously here, which is still very good, right? Mainly because if you are, for whatever reason, um, using only one drill, like for instance, this drill to do, you know, tap con insulation or whatnot, you don't have to always switch all the way from this um, clutch selector, right? to hammer drill which is usually it's like past the highest level, right? And then switch it back. You can literally just switch from one to back, right? And you can flip, you know, the bits or whatnot, even the uh, tap con quick change, you still have to flip the bit in and out or whatnot. So this one is generally pretty good. I don't see too many drills these days, um, nowadays at least coming with this option. And I think that's mainly because either they're moving electronic clutches or they wanna make it shorter, right? By, by some kind of means. But on this drill, they're both uh, manual clutches, right? But um, it generally works pretty well. Like I said, haven't had any issues. And the, the clutch selection will go all the way from one, to 21, right? So no problems, right? So um, the thing that you haven't, if, if you haven't noticed already, is that this drill has a plastic chuck. Um, for us, it hasn't had any issues, mainly because you know we don't really use this for super heavy duty work. It is their compact lineup. It doesn't have too much power. And um, for that reason, it doesn't, we don't really get too much um, banging around, at least not with this. It is a half inch uh, clutch and it generally works pretty well. We haven't had any issues with uh, it grabbing on or letting go of the bits or whatnot. And it generally ratchets down, right? Pretty well, okay? Uh, it does have a little bit of use down here, but not, not too much of, you know, whatever that stuff is, adhesive, glue, epoxy, whatever is going on here. So anyways, that's what you really get with this drill, right? So now without too much further ado, let's go ahead and 
get some performance numbers. So before we go ahead and do that, what we're gonna do is uh, just go over the track real quick. We actually take three runs putting in a 5 16 inch by six inch lag screw. We actually use a digital torque adapter meter, whatever you wanna call the inline to try to figure out what the peak torque of that one uh, measures during that. We take the average and on the half inch by eight inch lag, we run that three times. And if it doesn't get it through, it doesn't get it through, right? But we still run that with a torque meter on there to try to figure out what max peak torque it receives. And then on uh, this one, we'll also start including a three quarter inch auger bit. And, and we're gonna run that one twice and get an average of that one. And we also, since this is a hammer drill driver, we'll run with a um, half it or a quarter inch brand new, um, I think it was a four or six inch bit that we get through all the way, right? So initially we tried to start doing this off with the 12 inch SDS ones, uh, but as we started testing more and more drills, we realized that's not realistic that a lot of those drills are gonna get through that. So we actually ended up settling for a quarter inch. Um, I think it was like four or six inches, okay? So anyways, without too much further ado, let's go take a look at the numbers. All right, y'all, so I hope y'all caught those numbers because some of those numbers went by pretty quick and some of them did not. So let's go take a look at it, all right? So on the 5 16 inch by 6 inch lag test on the first run, it ran it at 7.24 seconds with a peak torque of 117. On the second run, it ran it with 7.08 seconds with a peak torque measured of 116. And on the third run, it ran it at 7.05 seconds with a peak torque measured of 104. The average peak torque measured on that was 112 and the average number of time it took to, to drive in those 5 16 inch by 6 inch lags was 7 seconds, 7.12 seconds, okay? So now moving on to the half inch by 8 inch lag. 
um, as you can probably see if you haven't seen already, um, it did not drive um, the half inch by eight inch leg in at all, pretty much. Or I mean, it didn't drive it in all the way, no matter how many times you ran in, okay? And we did have to run all the legs on speed one as through a lot of testing, it did not run any of them on speed two, okay? So now let's move on to the three quarter inch auger test. So on the three quarter inch auger test, we did have to run it on speed one and it ran the first run in 18.45 seconds. And on the second run, it ran it at 20.1 seconds. Taking the average of those two, it came out to around 19.28 seconds, all right? So moving on to the quarter inch masonry test. On the first run, it came in at 8.5 seconds. On the second run, it came in at 7.31 seconds. And on the third run, it came in at 7.45 seconds, making the average number of that come in at 7.76 seconds okay so out of all the testing and stuff that we did um, the peak torque that we measured out of this tool was roughly around 198 um, inch pounds so um, one thing i noticed about that peak torque measurement device thing is not super sensitive um, i think in a slow motion like if you're using a ratchet type motion you may get little better numbers or accuracy out of it but do this drill testing i'm just letting you know i just don't feel like 100 percent confident that it's always very accurate but you know for the sake of it we'll just go ahead and keep doing it and see what really goes on with that right so the total performance number of this tool with a 5 amp power battery comes out to about 26.4 plus did not finish right so um, obviously we didn't run the uh, three quarter inch uh, auger test with the ryobi drill which we probably go ahead and should we'll upload a short video sometime uh, on that relatively sometime shortly and uh, we're not going to include the hammer drill part of the test mainly because not all the drills in you know the drill lineup are going to be hammer drills and also um, anybody who's doing any real serious hammer drilling is going to have a dedicated sds drill okay so anyways point of that was we're trying to figure out what what pretty much is the performance number of a drill right and with a drill you're either you know driving in lag bolts which you really should do with an impact wrench or an impact driver but in order to get peak torque measurements or whatnot we're going to be doing that and high speed drilling in this case three quarter inch auger is not necessarily high speed drilling but it also provides enough resistance to you know try to figure out how you can drill through uh, basic you know standard material like wood whatnot right so Anyways, total performance number on that one will come out to 26.4 with also a did not finish. Um, so I'm already going to go ahead and say this drill probably already outperforms the Ryobi drill, mainly because um, the Ryobi, the numbers for just the lag bolts alone seem to be better in terms of lower. Um, we're going to go ahead, like I said, we'll go ahead and update the Ryobi drill driver sometime later. But for now, we're going to go ahead and say this XPH12 with the 5 amp hour battery is definitely in first place um, in terms of uh, performance and whatnot. It also does cost quite a bit, right? Uh, mainly because I believe just the tool only is about 129. You could eat, you sometimes buy it as a kit for right around closer to 200 bucks or whatnot. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about that for just a second, right? So what can we really say about this tool? Um, if you're in the Makita lineup and you're looking for a compact tool, uh, this is a good tool, right? Can't really argue against that. Would I go ahead and buy this tool if I was looking for a compact lineup? Probably not, because if I'm looking for a compact, I'm just gonna go for the smallest one that I could find, right? I mean, after all, it's called compact, right? In the Makita lineup, they do have a subcompact model, which comes in all black, right? I think they're kind of overdoing, or the industry's kind of overdoing it maybe just a little bit. This is just my opinion with, you know, they got subcompact, compact, regular standard, heavy duty, you know, like super heavy duty flagship or whatnot, all that stuff. I feel like, you know, it's out there and there's a place for somewhere like that. But for most people doing work or get just getting the job done, it's really more of you got a light duty, like a lighter one tool, right? And then you got the big old heavy duty one, right? So in this case, I personally would not go ahead and buy this. Uh, now, actually probably a good time to say, we did go out and buy this and we bought this a long time ago, a couple years ago when it came out in a kit or whatnot. Um, and we've gotten good use out of it, right? So if it comes in the kit, go for it. Is it a bad tool by any means? No, right? Is it the best tool or the heaviest duty tool by any means? No. Is it the lightest, um, lightweight drill driver by any means? No, 
Okay, so because of that reason, or because of those reasons, I would not go out and buy this again, all right? Um, so make sure you just keep that in mind. Um, I believe they have heavier, like bigger duty, heavier duty models or whatnot. I think there's one XPH 07. We do have that one. We'll take a performance numbers on that one soon. And then they also have, I believe, the XPH 14 maybe. Uh, maybe getting those numbers wrong, but we'll have to go ahead and check. But also, um, if I was going to be getting into the Makita lineup again, or right now, or whenever you're watching this video, I would definitely go ahead and buy into their XGT lineup, which is pretty much their 40 volt lineup, right? Um, a lot of their stuff and tools are pretty much the same, right? But they're coming out with more and more stuff. So it actually makes sense to go ahead and buy into that lineup. If you're in, you know, Home Depot or whatnot, and you just bought a house and you're trying to figure out, okay, I'm about to start buying tools or whatnot, right? What should I buy, right? When I buy this, if this is a good deal and you can get this for a pretty good deal, I would say go ahead and buy it because it's in their Makita lineup and Makita has pretty much all tools. But like I said, if you're just getting into tools because you just bought a house and you're trying to, you know, just do a few things around the house, I probably would not buy this because mainly because you would could find a better deal. Like for instance, the Ryobi HP One Plus Two, you get the impact driver and the uh, drill and two 1.5 amp hour batteries for roughly around 99 bucks, which um, if you're just doing stuff around the house, that'll probably be fine. Is this a good tool for a construction trade person? If you're not doing any heavy duty stuff, yes. So go ahead and get it if I was you. Okay, um, that's all I can really say about this tool. Uh, I know it's kind of rambled on for a little bit, but anyways, hope this video has helped you guys out. Um, stay tuned for more videos as we test more and more videos or more and more tools and stuff that we actually have used uh, hands on for quite a bit. So. Um, hope you guys out. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, stay tuned and we'll see you guys next time.